welcome to HITC Sport. All right, so the media has a bit of a habit of building games up to be bigger and better than they are, right? So big clashes, marketed as being stunning clashes between the giants of English football, Super Sunday and all that. How often do they actually live up to their billing? How many times do we all go down the pub, hypnotized into believing that, oh yes, this is gonna be a great game, only for it to be two hours later and we've drowned in our pint out of sheer boredom. How often do we come away from these big games wishing that we just spent those two hours pulling weeds out of our back garden or repeatedly smashing ourselves in the head with a wet plank. Well, actually, quite often, lads, and uh, yeah, let me prove it to you. I'm gonna find the biggest anticlimactic dullard of a Premier League game every year dating back to 2005. I'm here, lads. Let me prove it to you. 2005, Chelsea nil, Arsenal nil. Most of you probably won't remember this, because I'm guessing back in late 2005, you were nestled safely in your dad's nutsack, praying for the condom to break. But I remember, lads, back in April 2005, this was the game where Chelsea would have clinched their first ever league title, under the floodlights of Stamford Bridge, against the reigning champions of England. This promised to be a spectacle, the ceremonial passing of the torch from Wenger to Mourinho, as the Blues would lift their first league title in 50 years at Stamford Bridge. Except now, uh, this game is just a pile of musty old spunk. No goal. Not even a single threat of a goddamn goal. Even Didier Drogba, so often Arsenal's tormentor, it just played like Emil Heskey after a half a dose of horse tranquilizers. For Christ's sake, he was up against the backline of Colo Torre and Philippe Senderos. A damp sock could have penetrated that backline. No, but no, we were instead subjected to nine minutes of Jeremy Eliadier masquerading as a professional footballer. I remember sitting down to watch this game. After half an hour, I should probably have had my brain checked for internal bleeding. 2006, Arsenal nil, Man United nil. January 3rd, 2006. This would have been a battle between the two best teams in England. Not now, uh, with Chelsea so far ahead in the league. Arsenal and Man United were essentially battling it out to finish second. And who cares about the runner-up? It was billed as a grudge match, but in reality, it was just an inconsequential pudding of a game. The Carolina fixture in the previous season had yielded six goals and Roy Keane losing his head in the tunnel. The previous game before that, yeah, okay, that was nil-nil. But at least then, we had Martin Keown trying to eat a horse for dinner live on the pitch. And, and we also had pizzas getting chucked at old men. This was, it was a bit like watching any one of the Hobbit movies. Nothing of any note or relevance actually happened. This goal of draw left United 13 points off the top. And Arsenal, invincible champions of England 18 months earlier, were now 24 points off the... 24 points by the 3rd of January. Probably should have sacked Wenger then on the spot. All 38,313 sorry lads who gave up two hours after Tuesday afternoon should probably be reimbursed for their time. Because watching that, honestly, it was probably about as much fun as having your eyes pulled out of your skull. Chelsea nil, Man United nil. This game was an absolute joke. Neither team actually wanted to play it. So why should anyone have wanted to watch? You look at the start of the season, right? And you pinpoint this fixture as the one that will decide the title. Like the previous year where Chelsea swept them aside 3-0 at Sanford Bridge in April. But no, this game was just an utter inconvenience and was treated as a goddamn League Cup tie. People who started this game, right. Carlo Cotacini, Lasana Diarra at right back, Sean Wright Phillips, Scott Sinclair, Thomas Kuchak, Wesley Brown, Chris Eagles, Kieran Richardson, a decomposing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Dong, oh yeah, and some shite left back called Kieran Lee. It was almost disrespect. Wolves and Blackpool would later go on to be fined for fielding weaker teams in this competition. Allowing Dong Fang Ju and Kieran Lee to start trips to Stamford Bridge, that should arguably have come with a prison sentence for the lads at the top. This was supposed to be a title of cider, and you're chucking that bag of expired KFC rubbish out onto the pitch? People pay good money to watch this game, and you're giving them Dong? Travelling to Stamford Bridge and playing him? It's like preparing for your wedding. Instead of hiring a three-piece suit, you dress in an oversized potato sack. But the reason for Mourinho and Sir Alex treating this game the same way Joe Jackson treated his son was that both sides had an FA Cup final to play just 10 days later. But still, Scott Sinclair up against Kieran Lee. That's a battle that belongs halfway down the championship, not top of the Premier League. It's like two amateur boxers donning 10 ounce gloves and selling out the stable center. Yeah. It looks good in a nice arena, but the reality is the standard of boxing was little better than two hobos fighting over the last drop of whiskey down the back of Tesco's any given Sunday night. 2008, Chelsea nil, Liverpool nil. Grudge match. During the mid-2000s, Chelsea and Liverpool developed a fierce rivalry. Forget the Blues trying to steal their captain every 20 minutes. Forget that ghost goal which never really happened. These two had played each other 18 times in the previous four years. 18 times in four years! I don't even see my mother that often. They were probably sick to the sight of each other. Which is probably why they pulled out a cold, drab, limp and thoroughly uninspiring goal to draw Stamford Bridge in February 2008. I would describe this game to you, but honestly, uh, life is, is, is a bit too, too short, isn't it? And just trying to remember this turgid potato of a game is almost enough to induce PTSD flashbacks. It was so goddamn boring. 2009, Spurs nil, Arsenal nil. 
Well, the North London Derby usually yields gold, right? I mean, come on, their previous two games had yielded 12 of them. Not this one. No, 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 no. Nil, nil. Emmanuel Abue sent off after 37 minutes. And Robbie Keane demonstrating to F1 on the ground just why they should have never brought him back from Liverpool. Nicholas Bentner played more than an hour of football. So, you know, it wasn't going to be a pretty sight. And everyone who attended had probably spent their evening scrubbing their brain with washing up liquid. Anything to rid themselves of the goddamn memory. A bit like me trying to blank out that one night at my uncle's shed. That was in 10, Tottenham nil, Man City nil. Yeah, another mention for good old Spurs. August 2010, the opening game of the season. And surely this was a grudge match. Spurs had just prevented Man City from climbing into the top four just three months earlier. City were essentially visiting the home of the men who denied them their perceived birthright. A bit like popping around the house of the lad who just stole your wife just before the summer. And yet, no, this wasn't a tale of City exacting revenge upon those who robbed them. No, it was actually left to Joe Hart to preserve them a point. With Shea Given no doubt feeling like drinking shoe polish on the bench, you wait 30 years to get yourself a big move. And then within six months, you get replaced by a goddamn shampoo salesman. 2011, Tottenham nil, West Ham nil. <sighs> I feel bad for anyone who turned up this game in March 2011. Tottenham versus West Ham has yielded just one goalless draw in the last 20 years. That's nearly 40 bastard games. This fixture prides itself on producing goals. So I guess whoever bought a ticket for this one, haha, <laughs> turning up to a Tottenham versus West Ham derby game only to witness a complete lack of goals. It's a bit like forking out for a Kanye West concert, only for him to spend two hours coughing into the mic. After 20 minutes of the game, half the crowd probably felt like chewing off their own face. 2012, Chelsea nil, Tottenham nil. Sorry Spurs, fourth mention in a row. Maybe it's because, you know, he came to expect Harry Redknapp to provide us with some entertainment. This was before he quit management because of his knees and ended up licking donkey's ankles in the jungle. I mean, I assume that's what they do. I, I haven't watched Simon Celeb since 2003. But this was March 2012 and a battle for fourth. Yeah, it helped Spurs maintain their five point lead over Chelsea in the race for Champions League. But it was a bit futile considering what happened in Munich six weeks later. This was just, it was just a poor game. Again, this fixture hadn't produced a goalless draw in nearly eight goddamn years. Two weeks later, these sides were playing out a six goal thriller in an FA Cup semi-final. I mean, I say thriller, Spurs got smashed 5-1. 2013, Man United nil, Chelsea nil. Oh, I remember this game. The first competitive home match at Old Trafford that wouldn't feature Sir Alex Ferguson in the dugout. David Moyes against Jose Mourinho. Two men who had accepted big jobs that summer. Man United v Chelsea, that was built as the start of a new era. A new dawn for both clubs. And then we were treated to the first goal of straw at Old Trafford in 77 games. United fans should have known then, watching the champions of England stumble to a pitifully dull stalemate, that the David Moyes era was going to be about as much fun as eating a block of granite. And the Mourinho era after wasn't going to be much better. That was in the 14, Arsenal nil, Man United nil. Was this an anticlimax? It was February 2014 and Man United, the reigning champions of England, were seventh in the league. Just three points above Southampton and 15 off the top. But this was Arsenal's first game back after a 5-1 mauling in Anfield. While United had recently been booed off the pitch in a two-all draw at Fulham, where their tactic just consisted of chucking 81 crosses into the box. You'd expect a reaction from both teams, there was none. Neither sets of players were seemingly arsed to make amends, to fight back a bit of pride. No, nothing. The fans looked even too bored out of their mind to even properly boo Van Percy. 2015, Man United nil, Man City nil. Is anyone bored of these nil all draws yet? <laughs> I'm surprised you're still watching. I'm almost beginning to question the meaning of life myself, just being forced to describe all 15 of them. There were no goals, they were dull. That, that was it. But 25th October 2015 was Super Sunday. The time we were derby in the morning with Man City travelling to Man United in the afternoon. Just two points separated these sides after 10 games. And the game was pathetic. This was only the third goal as Manchester derby in the Premier League era. The first time in 13 games where it ended without a winner. It was Man City's first goal of stalemate in 61 games. It was only the second game that season to not have a single shot on target in the first half. It was the first time Man United had done that in 12 goddamn years. Wayne Rooney used to celebrate his birthday with hat-tricks. Now he had the fewest touches on the pitch. Just 50. 50 touches in 90 minutes and he lost the ball 28 times. And don't even get me started on the presence of Wilfred Boney up front. A man with all the work ethic of a dead postman. 2016, Liverpool nil, Man United nil. God, this is boring. October 2016, Red Monday. Jurgen Klopp versus Jose Mourinho. Judging by the way it was marketed, you would swear it was a clash of the titans. Two giants in English football going head to head. I'd rather have spent two hours watching paint dry. Their standard of football was almost enough to scrape enamel off your teeth. It's only the second goal draw between these two in primitive history. There were just four shots the entire game. They this match, this insipid, dull, tepid display from both sides, it was almost an insult to these teams' long-standing rivalry. It was essentially a staring match for 90 goddamn minutes. 2017, Man City nil, Man United nil. 
I could have gone for Man United's goal of straw at Anfield again, but no, back to the Manchester Derby for this one. This was the battle for fourth. Just five games left and one point separated the sides. A win for either would have put some daylight between the teams. And yet, no, the only thing that happened of note was Maron Fellaini got his sent off for a headbutt. It was dull and boring and played at the pace of a preseason friendly. 2018 Liverpool nil, Man City nil. Jurgen Klopp versus Pep Guardiola. The previous four games between these sides had yielded 18 goals. This Anfield match, no goals and just a last minute penalty. 2019 Man United nil, Liverpool nil. What has happened to this clash? How much longer can Sky keep bigging this game up before people begin to realize that no, watching these two play is about as entertaining as Paul Jules' sex tape. Anyway, that's the end of the video, guys. Uh, let me know if you've agreed. If you've managed to sit through me describing about 15 goalless draws, fair play to you. <laughs> Ah, uh, someone should get you a medal. Let me know if you disagree. Actually, how can you disagree with this? I proved it. These were terrible, terrible games. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.